wonderfully and wonderfully made. Glory to God. Glory to God. These are great days, everybody. These are great days. And uh, because we serve a great God. And when you worship a great God, he'll make your day great. Do not be consumed or not be distracted by other people's conversation. I pray that your ears become so attuned to those who, who have had a conversation with God. Amen. We cannot listen to voices that have not been in the secret place. Because it's our job now as born again believers that his kingdom come and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. That can happen if you have not communicated with heaven. All you're talking about is what you see. Amen. If you're not seeing the right things and hearing the right things, you'll be saying the wrong things. If you're not seeing the right things and hearing the right things, you'll be saying the wrong things. And so death and life is in the power of our tongue and we have whatsoever we say. It. So we do not join in the conversations, amen, that are going on in the earth that's not causing his kingdom to come. And his will to be done on earth as it is in the light in heaven. Amen. Now listen, that begins first of all in your own life. Praise God. So anything that's opposing you, you tell them what heaven has said and your opposition will be defeated. I don't care what it is. You got to know the protocol of the kingdom. Amen. Jesus said it like this. I only came to say what my father has said. Glory to God. So we're going to talk about ourselves the way God talks about us. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. It has nothing to do with the complexity of your skin, the complexion of your skin, or the texture of your hair. Come on now. Your height or anything else. You got to say, as God has said, I am. Say it. Practice it. I am beautifully and I am wonderfully made because I am made me. He created me and he had a plan for me. Glory to God. And because I know his plan for me, I'm no longer subject to abuse. I'm no longer, praise God, defeated. But I walk in the victory that's been given to me through Christ Jesus. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I'm saved. Amen. Now I am saved. I have been rescued from all danger, hurt, and harm. Come on now. I am healed. I am whole. I am entire. I want nothing. Glory to God. Because I have everything that pertains to life. In heavenly places. That's why we got to know what heaven is saying. And then tell this earth. Amen. What heaven has said concerning you. Hallelujah. And because the father has said it. And the Holy Ghost watches over to perform it. And you say it. Glory to God. Guess what? You have whatsoever you said. You've been preserved. Yes, you have. Amen. You've been delivered from diseases and sickness. Glory. So call yourself well. Hallelujah. And you are prospering and being in health as your soul is prospering. Hallelujah. Come on, clap our hands right there. That's good news. That's good news. Now, this good news is confrontational now. It's confrontational. First thing you're going to confront, amen, is any stinking thinking that you have. Amen. You got to know the thoughts and the plans he have towards you. Amen. And now I'm going to talk like God talks about me. Hallelujah. Amen. So the first place he's going to confront is you. And it's going to confront uh, your environment. But you won't have the dominion to confront your environment if you don't know what heaven has said and what heaven is saying concerning you. You will become a victim. 
You will become a, 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 a refuge, <laughs> a refugee in a place you would never call to remain in. Amen. Hallelujah. So everybody say, I'm raising the standard. Yeah, I'm raising the standard. So we've been sharing that. And you can never raise the standard until the standard has been raised in you. Okay. I want to know, those of you who have heard this declaration, this call, this call to the higher calling of God. Has the Holy Ghost troubled you concerning these things? We shared with you last week in Isaiah 59, praise God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against it. Amen. So we're no longer subject to the throes and the tactics of the enemy because a standard's been raised. Okay. Now others are getting up because you got up. Others will live because you're living. I said others will live because you're living. Don't get distracted. Keep living. Keep declaring. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. I told you real preaching is just explaining why and how you live like you live. If we get distracted and not live, we'll be explaining, come on now, why we're not living. <laughs> we will. We'll be making excuses. We'll even get to the place of not even understanding or recognizing, <laughs> praise God, that I don't believe God. And that's when you've become, amen, a product of your environment. You have been called to transform lives. And this gospel is how you are transformed. And the evidence of your true transformation is the way that you talk. Because you are a speaking spirit. Amen. When you change your mind, you change your life. When you change your mind, you change your life. Remember, David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I won't sin against you. That I don't lose my identity. And that I don't miss the mark. Hmm? So we've got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, the anointed word. The Christos is the anointing. Jesus is the word. The anointed word. Come on. Everybody say the anointed word. Say this word is anointed. This gospel is the power of God under my salvation. Whoo wee, I feel like running y'all. That's why, come on, when you have the word hit in your heart, you won't just have an anointing on your gift, but you have an anointing on your life. Do not settle for just being gifted because the gift and callings of God are without repentance. You can be gifted and suffering. Come on now, you can be gifted and not well. You can be gifted and, 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 and lacking. You can be gifted and be depressed. But oh my God, when the anointing gets on your life, 
your joy is made full. Now you are explaining why you live and how you live like you live. You're not just proclaiming something that you don't even believe. And can I tell you something? If you have a product that you don't believe in yourself, nobody's going to believe you. So with that, your influence is low. You've got to make sure that the standard that's being raised in me, my influence is increasing. My influence is on the rise. Come on. You need to know when I open my mouth, do atmospheres shift? Do yokes get destroyed? Are burdens removed or am I just talking? If atmospheres don't shift, yokes don't get destroyed, and burdens don't get removed, come on. You have subjugated your authority and you stop believing the gospel that came to give you life. And now you're just existing and going through the motions. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. The born again believer, spiritual believer, ought to have some fire operating in them. Come on. Say fire. Tongues of fire. You got that, uh, 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 Lady Dorinda, don't you? Tongues of fire. Can I tell you something? If you don't have enough fire operating in you, you ain't praying in tongues enough. I'm going to say it again. If you don't have no fire on you, you ain't praying in tongues enough. You need to pray in the spirit until your most holy faith comes alive. Jude 20. When we pray in the spirit, it builds up our most holy faith. Romans 8, 26, 27 says that the spirit makes intercession for us. He deals with our infirmities when we don't know what to pray for. Do not settle for not having the fire of God in your life. I said in your life, not on your gift. Pastor Stephanie alluded to evangelism. Let me tell you something. If evangelism ain't happening in your life, you have become lukewarm. Lukewarm Christians don't evangelize. They don't have enough compassion upon them. They don't have enough substance in them. Amen. They're oppressed. Come on. Ooh, this tall cotton. Lukewarm Christians don't evangelize. Can I tell you something? Lukewarm Christians can't evangelize. Because the anointing upon their life, amen, is dormant. We cannot be speaking from head knowledge. We got to speak from that which is inspired of the Holy Ghost. When you pray, come on y'all. That's why we have you all and we have a uh, nine o'clock prayer on Sundays, corporate prayer. 
Amen. I want you to know as your shepherd, as your bishop, I'm listening to how you pray. I want to know if you pray and dry as a saltine cracker or do you got some fire in your prayer. I'm not talking about being loud. I ain't talking about being emotional. I'm talking about do anything move when you pray. Or are you just talking from your head? We it. We are the now of God. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If, if society is going to change, generations are going to change, we're going to be the ones to bring, form that, bring forth that transformation. Are we hearing that? We will not settle for just religion. Religion is a practice way of doing things absent the power of God. Okay. You can pray religiously. But if it's absent the power of God, that's what you did. You just prayed religiously. It was a religious prayer. Ooh. We want to make sure that we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto his church. When we pray, glory to God, when we're not praying in the Holy Ghost, we ought to be hearing what heaven is saying and telling the earth what heaven needs to be communicated. Oh, declaring what the Holy Ghost wants declared. Saying what God wants to be said. Come on now. Are we good? I just said a lot. Let's talk about it. See, I refuse to be lukewarm. And guys, I want y'all to know, and y'all gonna open these mics and we're gonna talk tonight. The strong man in this region is religion. Do you hear me? And we are called. We've been assembled. We've been gathered. He saved us. He filled us, uh, Mr. Temple, uh, Elder Temple, uh, Dean, Brittany. Mother Carruthers, he called us, assembled us together. We ain't here by happenstance. We ain't here by, by anything. This is the divine Kairos moment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We've been assembled to destroy the strongholds of religion and the strongholds of poverty. Somebody said, that's who I am. I've been called. I've been, I've been transformed. My mind has been renewed to destroy the strongholds of poverty and the strongholds of religion. Buildings don't do that. People do. Glory to God. That's why you can say, I've been called to destroy the strongholds of religion and the strongholds of poverty. And the word does the work. The word is what I have hid in my heart, that I don't miss God, that I don't sin, that I don't lose my identity. And I'm going to declare this word, both logos and rhema, amen, that it causes this earth, amen, and yokes be destroyed, birds be removed, and strongholds be abolished. Because there's an anointing on my life because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Christos, the anointing and the anointed one. And listen, the Christos, the anointing, and he is the word. Okay. Glory. Let's talk about it. Questions, comments. Or you fully understand, because you fully understand, we can move on. But I want y'all to know, I expect to see some fruit.
I got a question. Come on. Yeah, you said, um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. When we are praying, if nothing, like you said, if, if some may move and shift in atmospheres, like when we are praying, how do we know that that is transpiring? Because something's moving in you. It comes to you first. Mm -hmm. It's coming through you. Mm -hmm. So if it's, if it's heaven, if it's coming from heaven, it can't come from heaven and then not transform and not destroy a yoke in you. It doesn't move you. It doesn't. Are you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know what the power of God feels like. I'm praying under the anointing. And when the grace lifts, I shut up. When I feel, when, I, when I'm not hearing anything else from heaven, it's time for me to be quiet. Does that make sense? And so we got to be comfortable with fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We got to know what it feels like, what it looks like, when we can discern I'm being led by His Spirit. That's when we become effective. Most people don't evangelize because they don't, they're not effective winning souls, not effective, amen, uh, praying for the sick. They're not effective, amen, doing the work of the ministry because many times we're not doing it led by his spirit. And if you won't let him lead you in, in, in every sense of life, amen, it's hard for you to know when he's leading you when you really need to be led. So then we resort back to our own mind. We become critical, judgmental, not in faith, uh, whatever it may be, and we don't see no results. And then we might pray for someone because we know they need prayer, amen, but it wasn't an anointed prayer. Come on now. We just prayed out of our head because that's what we do. We pray for people. So I just pray for you. But if, if, if come on now, you got to say that when I pray, I know that yokes are destroyed and burdens are removed. Amen. Glory to God. And expect what you prayed for to manifest itself. Bishop. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. Mama yes, man. Bishop, uh, you remember one Sunday when when I was telling you all that the Holy Spirit was moving and prayer was going forth. And I was going to listen that day and I was just going to sit and listen. And, and I'm just bringing it up because um, of sometimes you know, the question being, how do you know when God is talking to you? Or how do you know when he's talking to me? Well, he opened his mouth and talked to me. The Holy Spirit said, you're going to get this close and going to get in God's presence and not say anything. So he told me to pray for people that needed to be saved that day and wouldn't, wouldn't go down front in their churches when the, when they were being called to come, you know, to come to be saved. Some of them would, would not get up and go. And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. But once it, it got done and I did the prayer and everything, and uh, it was absolutely, you can, I could tell that it was, was the Holy Spirit um, leading me to that prayer. But this is what I want to tell you confirmation-wise. Later that day, one of the pastors that I used to uh, attend church with in Wisconsin, um, he, he's a part, he, he is a part with uh, Bishop Warren right now. And um, anyway, he never has put on online who got saved that day or what, who or how many. That particular day, he posted how many souls got saved in their service that day. And it, and, and I could, it was confirmation for me for doing what, what the Holy Spirit told me to do, what God told him to tell me to do. And when I did it, and just the mere fact that I happened to be reading their, their line that Sunday evening, 
and he was telling how many people, how many souls got saved in his service. He's never done that. So I know that it was confirmation for me to listen to, to the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is moving and when God is talking to us through the Holy Spirit, we need to respond and act on it. That's all. Absolutely. That's what being led by a spirit looks like. There's results. And can I tell you something? That will cause you to embrace prayer like never before. When you start seeing fruit from your labor. Oh, why won't the saints pray? The scripture tells us we taught you all this last week or week before last. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll forgive their sin. I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I'll heal the land. Okay, well, dirt don't need healing. People do. Buildings don't need healing. People do. We got people that's got traumas, post-traumatic stress disorders. We got people that need their minds renewed. We need people that need to get born again. People need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. People need, need to know what love is really looks like and all those things they need to know that god is a miracle worker they need to know that he's he's a he's a provider he's jehovah Jack. they need to know that and when they hear the saints of god praying for them and then he does what he prayed for they're gonna be like i want i, I want what you got i want to come on but if you don't believe he's jehovah rafa if you don't believe he's jehovah jireh if you don't believe he's jehovah neva you don't believe he's who he say he is Come on now, then you're just praying religious prayers. Praise God. That makes sense to you? Mm-hmm. And so people, when Ste I believe what Stephanie was praying, one of you guys prayed, one, one, one of you, one of y'all prayed, we are going to be known as houses of prayer. Forget all this other stuff you want to be known in. You need to be known that as a person that when I pray, God move. Forget about them. Yeah, I, you sure did preach. Mm, yeah, I might have preached, but when I pray, did he do anything? That's why with preaching, there also be demonstration. With you living, there ought to be demonstration. If you say you're a Christian, you walk and breathe and talk and confess Christ and you want to buy, 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 and you want to do all of that, and then there's no demonstration of his divine power, his divine nature, praise God. We're going to have to dip you one more time. We're going to have to lay hands on you one more time. We're going to we're gonna have to, come on now, come on now, because that, that ain't acceptable. It just is not acceptable. You need to bear fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. If we ain't bearing no fruit, what does the Bible say? You're going you to need to be pruned now. You're going you're gonna to need to. Hmm? So we got to abide in the word and the word got to abide in us. That's John 15, y'all. Y'all know that, right? Okay, that's John 15. Everybody say that's John 15. If you know what John 15 said, know what your assignment is, go read John 15. The whole chapter. Because that's where you get the anointing on your life. Okay. The anointing on your life, God. The anointing on your life. Somebody say, I need the anointing on my life. So that when I open my mouth, I'm explaining why I live like I live and how I live like I live. This is what this is what they say. Uh, action speaks louder than words. That's why whenever the gospel is being preached, there ought to be demonstration of the power of his resurrection. Come on. You cannot be okay with you walking, breathing, talking, amen, praying day after day and year after year and you not seeing people get born again, people getting healed, people getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Your environment changing. You changing. Come on now. I'm not going to be... Uh, uh, 
in lack all of my life. Now, I might have been in lack when I didn't know no better, but now I know the truth. And now I know that I am, amen, in covenant, praise God, with the God that have a cattle on a thousand hills that makes all things possible, that he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider, right? Okay. <laughs> now you got to talk to yourself like that. You got to talk like God talks about you. You got to say, because you believe it in your heart, you can say, I will never lack another day in my life. Because I am in covenant relationship with Jehovah Jireh. Whoo -wee. I just heard yokes be destroyed and burdens get removed. I will never, no, never lack another day in my life because I am in covenant relationship with Jehovah Jireh. My provider. This ain't based upon your job. Keep on working now because if a man don't work, he don't eat. This is based upon your covenant. This is based upon your maintaining of your covenant. This is based upon your faith in your covenant. Come on now. But to accept lack, lack is not the protocol of the kingdom. Say it out of your mouth again. I will never. No, never lack another day in my life because I am in covenant relationship with Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Hmm? See, if you won't say it out your mouth, it's not in your heart. Therefore, come on now, therefore, you're going to suffer an identity crisis and you lack faith. And so if I know what the Bible says, but I don't know what it teaches and I don't believe it, then I have need as a born again believer to pray in the Holy Ghost until the Come on now, my faith comes to the place where I can say it out of my mouth because the word of God has gotten out of my head and now it has gotten in my heart and now out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth is speaking and I have whatsoever I say. I'm taking my life back. God has given me dominion. He's given me power. He's given me authority. Is this good? Say, I have dominion. I have been given power and I have been given authority. My authority is based on the blood. Come on now. His name and his word. Come on now. Your covenant was a blood covenant. It ain't some, ain't, ain't nobody writing in no disappearing ink. Ain't nobody, he, he can't take it back. This is a blood covenant. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? There's no other covenant, come on here, in the world that's like this covenant God has made with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say this is good news. But this good news is going to confront my unbelief. It's going to confront my ignorance. It's going to destroy yokes. Come on now. It's going to destroy, annihilate strongholds. I don't care if everybody in your family been broke all their life. I will never be broke another day in my life. Ain't got nothing to do with you living in Mississippi. Nothing to do with you living in wherever. Are we good? Mm. 
And if you believe that in your heart and you confess that out of your mouth, the Holy Ghost will watch over to perform it. Hallelujah. Y'all talk to me. Ask some questions. Make some comments. Unless you got it, we can move on. We can keep on plowing. We plowing tonight. Come on, I want to see your faces. Don't get distracted. This is a Kairos moment. We're getting ready to go into the to the to the third quarter. We're going to finish the second. Well, we're going in with some spiritual momentum into the third. Talk to me. Confrontation. It's okay to say to someone, hey, have you prayed in the Holy Ghost today? I don't see no joy on you. I don't see no no fire in you. Come on now, you talk. You talk like you, like you, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Bishop, I, I literally, just say. I pray in the spirit every day. And um, at, the other day, it was different. And I woke up early and I took to, to give God my time. And I, my 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 tongue sounded different, but I knew mm -hmm. what I was doing. Know. And I didn't know I didn't know that was um a thing that was possible. So I had to reach out to uh, Stephanie and Quisha. I was like, "Hey, y'all, good morning." Um, I was praying in the spirit. I sounded different. That's supposed to happen. <laughs> yes. And 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 they, and they told me yes. And I'm maturing. And God is so good. He's so faithful. He's so honest, transparent, and he is all that he said he is, because you can be in the darkest time of your life, but the world thinks it's the darkest time of your life, but yet people see you, and you still got joy on you, that you got the Come anointing on. on you, that's where I am, I like yeah. glory to God, and um, it's just that I just, I want to learn how to be a better evangelize every day, I talk about God every day, Everybody I talk to, I talk about God every day. And then, um, and I, I'm not trying to talk about nobody. And I can neg don't take this wrong. Anyone that's no judging. But I, uh, uh, like I was at the gym one Saturday morning, and um, I, I got a text on my phone saying like, uh, some another religious group kept coming to the house on the Saturday, and I was like, ooh, keep them there. I want to listen what they got to say so I can try to. I'm gonna debunk them because I know they're gonna say something wrong. I've read this in this Bible. I want to see why you thinking the way you're thinking and so I can show you in the word what I've learned and what can help you so um I I desire I enjoy I'm in love with the word I'm in love with God and you know that that is authentic and true when you hit those dark days because when you so carnal in your mind and in your flesh dark days are dark days but when you are anointed and living in the word it's always like and glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, ooh. He helped us to be happy. Oh, thank you, God. And then people see you don't gotta say a word. They see it. They see it on you. And then it's like you want it, like you're so eager. I'm so eager to to learn more, do better, do better, do better. When I slip, I repent, and I know I got a God that loves me so much that He will convict me and then hug me, and let's get it right. And I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is this is what we call hungering and thirsting after righteousness. That's what we need to pray for people when you start talking about evangelism. Okay, you need to be praying, making intercession for people, saying, "God, give them a hunger and a thirst after righteousness." Because until they desire to have right thinking and, and, and right ways of feeling and right ways of behaving, change cannot transpire. 
So that needs to be your, your intercession. You are not going to evangelize if you don't intercede and pray for people. Oh, I've been and I've been interceding and praying and because the Holy Spirit already told me in whatever situation I'm in, like I'm standing in the gap. Before I even knew something was coming, God prepared me. The Holy Spirit and, and prayer. I was told I was being prepared for something. I was honest, man. I'm gonna. I was like, "Ooh, this sound heavy," and, and um, the Holy Spirit told me, "But I got you." So, but I didn't know what was, was coming. So I've been interceding and praying because I was told I, was, I gotta stand in the gap. So I have a question though, because I know it's like you know, you see someone you love, and you know how to, the the answer. You know God is the answer, and you can't big brain and manipulate God. And you know what they're trying to. So I just keep praying and praying and praying for them. But I know what you need to do to get it right. And he will reach down in the depths of hell and pull you out of because he is God. He can do that. And so it's like, um, I'm right now I've been praying for God to guide me to he continue to sharpen my sword, continue to sharpen my tongue, continue to, so I can save a, help save a soul. Well, always remember this. The word does the word. Yes. And he sent the word and it healed him. So you begin praying with them, God, I thank you that they're hungering and thirsting after righteousness. I thank you, Lord, that they are confessing Christ. And, you know, those are the things that you begin to pray and let the word do the work. I send the word, God, that they will have peace and they will have joy and that they would, they would be free from addictions and free from hurt and harm and those types of things so that the enemy is not bombarding them with so much oppression that they cannot uh, 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 um, even even comprehend that God loves them and comprehend that there's a there's 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 a better life because people can be so overwhelmed. So when you see those things, you listen to the Holy Spirit and you pray what the Holy Ghost tell you to pray for them and pray in the Spirit for them because sometimes what we're praying for, we're praying amiss. That's not even the root of the problem. But the Holy Ghost will give you the root of the problem if you just trust Him. Okay? So that's what you were talking about. You experience a different type of tongues. Some tongues is a warring tongue. Some tongue is a worshiping tongue. Some tongue is a tongue of praise. There's tongues... Uh, uh, where it's making intercession for you with groanings and moanings that, that, that man cannot even utter and you're not going to understand. And so sometimes the Holy Ghost is praying for you. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is praying for somebody else. Sometimes there's things that are going on we don't know and he's going to war for us and you're declaring war in the heavenlies. You, you know what I'm saying? So just yield yourself. Don't quench the spirit and you're going to grow and you're going to mature. And when your faith continues to develop, God's going to use you more and more and more. And because you have such a heart and a burden and a passion to see someone who is hurting and, 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 and being denied, you know what God is over to them. Just keep praying in the Holy Ghost and God's going to order your steps. Okay. God's going to order your step. And you're going to win many souls to Christ because you have a heart for them. You care about people. You don't want to see people hurting. You don't want to see people not living uh, their best life, the life that God given to them. So you just keep letting the Holy Ghost um, pray through you. And then he'll order your steps when it's time for you to put your hands to some things. He'll even orchestrate. He's an orchestrator of divine situations. OK, to where you will be there and you will have the words to say a man that's going to bring what heaven wants to do in the earth. Amen. And, and so just know that. And he just to, you know, just 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 know the word does the work and let him orchestrate and order your steps. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so, listen, guys, you, you need to understand this. Um, the carnal mind is an enemy of God. You don't want to be an enemy with God. You want to be friends with God. Okay? And to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Many people are, are in search of peace. Everybody needs peace. It's one of the innate things that we need. 
Okay? But if 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 we don't renew our minds and become spiritually minded, we have four basic appetites: hunger, sex, greed, and spiritual. And we need our spiritual appetite to come to the forefront. Okay? And this is what we need. This is what causes us to have the anointing on our life. Okay? And we not be lukewarm. Because one of the reasons why you're not lukewarm is because you keep watch God, watching God do great things for you. You keep seeing God, how God uses you to pray on for someone or to pray about a thing. And then you watch God do it. And then you ain't even there. You can send the word to him. You can be in a whole nother state. You can be in a whole nother nation. I mean, that's why we're called city to city, state to state, nation to nation. I mean, you don't have to be there with your loved one. You can pray for your loved one where you are. Send the word. Send the word. Pray for them. Make intercession for them. And then watch God save them. And then he'll, 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 he'll show you. And it'll cause your joy to be full. It'll cause you to be so many at so much peace. Do you understand? Yeah. But but when we're counter minded, it causes it says that it's death. But to be spiritually minded, this is Romans 8 and 6. To be spiritually minded is life. Listen, that's not that's not normal life. That's not life as we commonly know it. You've been called to an uncommon life. Come on, Dorinda, help me, help me, help me. You know the grace of God that's on your life. This is uncommon. The favor of God that's on your life. This is absolutely uncommon. This is because you belong to Jesus. That's because you are born again. That's because you got the Holy Ghost. Average people cannot endure. Don't go through. Don't, don't succeed. Don't have no joy. Don't have no smile on their face. They depressed, oppressed. Come on now. Who, Jesus. We are called to an uncommon life. Say, I have an uncommon life. Hallelujah. I have an uncommon life. I have the life that God intended for me. You're going to live like no other. You're going to live. Listen. It's time for you to say, I'm living like I've never lived before in my life because I agree with God and there's nothing common about God. There's nothing common about God. He does what he wants, when he wants to, how he wants to, and who he wants to do with it. So I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. Can't nobody stop my blessing. Can't nobody... Come, are y'all understand what I'm saying to you? I just need to make sure I'm walking with God, Mr. Temple. That's all. And I agree with God. I'm going to talk like you talk about me. I don't care who don't like it. And rebuke your own self. Come on, rebuke your own self. You know, sometimes we say stupid stuff. Be like, that was stupid. What did I say that for? I rebuke my own self. Lay hands on your own head. Hmm? Decree over your own life. Let the mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. I'm going to think like God thinks, because that's how successful people think. Where you get that from, bitch? Where you get that back? Well, that's what he told Joshua. He told him, amen, to meditate in his word day and night. And don't let it depart from his mouth to keep on declaring and keep on speaking. He says, and then he's going to have good success and his way going to be made prosperous. Now, success leads clues. Hmm? Glory to God. So I live an uncommon life. Everybody else lacking. I'm not. Other people sick. I'm not. Other people depressed. I'm not. Folks just living any type of way. I'm not. And because I'm raising the standard, and I know, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel, and I'm not afraid of confrontation, I'll share with people, hey man, you need to get born again. Man, if you get born again, your life will change forever. I ain't got to say 
you know, stuff like, you going to hell. No, 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 no. Man, I got to talk about this life I live. Why, why I live like I live and how I live like I live. Man, I got born again. And when I got born again, man, all of that stuff I was dealing with, brother, man, it began to come off of me. Hmm? And then you know, if they're born again, and then you know, hey, 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 you, do, you, do you pray in the Spirit? I ain't heard such a thing. Do you have the Holy Ghost? No, I ain't never seen the Holy Ghost. I well, Scripture says, have you received since you believe? You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you can have someone internally on the inside of you that will pray for you when you don't even know what to pray for. My God. Hallelujah. You need to have the ability because it is your purpose and it is your assignment that his kingdom comes and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, the person of the Holy Ghost in the gift of tongues allows you to have a conversation with heaven that the devil don't know, can't understand. And then you become God's, come on now, special agent. You become God's secret forces. My God. Don't y'all know we the special forces of God? Then not only that, my God, you have the gifts of the Spirit. Uncommon wisdom. It's called the word of wisdom. Uncommon wisdom. Amen. You ain't got to have no, no 45 degrees and all that. You have the Holy Ghost. And in 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 the word of wisdom is operating in your life. You are amazed. For let me tell you all the testimony. I never got my mother's on here. She can tell you. I went to college, but I didn't finish my 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 natural uh, degree. Okay, I probably would have got into engineering because I love the way things work and all that. Okay, but I didn't finish all of that. Amen. But I would be in meetings with all these engineers that didn't have a clue on how to fix stuff. I'd pray. I pray in the spirit of Mother Carruthers, and I teach them. And matter of fact, my wife Margaret, she met one of the engineers the other day, and he said, you were one of the best, one of the best uh, uh, people in supervision that we had. But anyway, they couldn't solve the problem, Mr. Temple. I pray in the Holy Ghost, and God would show me exactly what it was. I'd tell them how to fix it. I didn't have no engineering degree, and they'd be baffled. They'd be like, he ain't got no engineering. He ain't no Emmy. He ain't no... E E M electrical engineer. He ain't. He ain't. I know, but I got the Holy Ghost, and God is the greatest engineer ever. He know everything. So you rely on your little book sense. You got that, brother Keith? Elder Keith, my God. See, so you never have to feel inferior. Because you serve a superior God. But you got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with living an uncommon life. I was never nervous going in the room with all those guys that had them degrees. Because I knew I could pray in the Holy Ghost. And I would know more than they knew. They'd be arguing and cussing each other out and all of that. Getting to get fired. Amen. Come on. Just be at peace. Because hmm? you know you can pray and get the answer. Word of knowledge. Gift of faith. Working of miracles. Huh? Who wanna, wouldn't want to have an uncommon life like that? Except for someone who has never experienced an uncommon life like that. That's why you got to live this thing out. That's why you got to be the example. That's why you can talk about it when this is the way you live. This is how you function. This is how you operate. They see it on you and then they're going to be like Nicodemus. Now, I know, I know you, you know, you know, but explain to me how you knew that. 
You get a word of knowledge about somebody and you know they hadn't told you. You don't even know them. But then God tells you something that lets them know that it is God that's letting them know about you. And it will cause them to believe on a God that he didn't believe in. Because they didn't tell nobody about this. Nobody knows what God might give you. It's called a word of knowledge. Somebody said that's an uncommon life. Will everybody say to me tonight, say with me tonight, I live an uncommon life because I'm in covenant relationship with an uncommon God. I will never, no, never be oppressed another day in my life because of my covenant with my uncommon God through his son, Jesus Christ. See, people don't want to be saved because people really don't know what it looked like to be saved. Hmm? And you ain't evangelizing nothing until you get some anointing on you. Them strongholds, come on now, it's not coming down. The word of God says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They are strongholds. You ain't getting in. They think that Sirach, they think that sex, they think that money, they think whatever they are doing, it's their God, it's their savior, it's their, it's their thing. And until you get some anointing on you and you start showing, come on now, the life that God intended for you to live. The joy and the peace without the selling of your soul and the abuse. Come on now. And the deception and the lies. My God, you know you pretending you ain't happy. You depressed. That's why you drink all the time. You faking. Anytime you need some type of substance, you ain't where you think you are. You may be pretending that you are. I'm living my best life. No, you really are secretly depressed. And there's sometimes, glory to God, because I do have discernment. Come on now. Because I do, I do have an ear to hear with the Spirit of the Lord. There are times, amen, that people are depressed and they're masking it with stuff. That is why we have to have authentic believers. We cannot be absent the power of God in this day and time. Say, I will not be absent the power of God upon my life. I need y'all to open y'all microphones. I need to hear you say it. I see your lips moving, but I want to know you speaking it in the atmosphere. Come on, come on. Oh, I, not, will, not, I will not, 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 not be absent, absent the, the power of God, of God in my life. In my life. My life. Why you said my picture? Come here. I said, man, repeat it again. Why you put my picture up there? God, Amen. Thank you. I will not be absent the power of God in my life. Come on, come on. I will not be absent the power of God in my life. I will not be absent yes, of our yes, God yes, in my yes, life. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you. I will not be absent from the power of God in my life. Amen. Glory, glory. Absent the power of God in my life. Amen. I will not. Hmm? <laughs> yes. Do you Lord. make those declarations? <laughs> okay. You make those declarations. Yeah, thank you, God. That, thank that's God. when you're talking like God talks about you. My Lord. Mm -hmm. It Lord. feels good, too. 
Glory. Sure does. It mm -hmm. does. <laughs> Mother, you got to talk one. like God talks about you. you That's right. That's yeah. right. Ooh, glory. That's how you break out of oppression. Yeah, yeah. That's what keeps you from depression. That's right. Mm. And again, it's knowing the plans, knowing the thoughts he has towards you. Mm -hmm. If you don't know his thoughts, you're limited to your thoughts. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Are we good? Yes, yes. So raising the standard, confrontation. Okay. When you begin interceding and praying for people, you also get compassion. Stephanie brought that out. So it's, it's called your love goes up. Faith works about love and love works about faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when you begin knowing God's plan for man, God's plan for yourself, we will stop allowing the plan of the enemy to destroy people's lives. For the enemy comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And when people don't know the plan of God, they are left to the plans of the enemy or plans they try to come up with on their own. And you cannot do this life on your own. This makes sense? So this is what 21st century evangelism looks like. Raising the standard, knowing the plan, knowing the divine strategy. Divine strategy of God is that man be born again. That man is filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I have to go because I've, I've prepared a place for you. He says, but listen, don't fret now. Don't, don't, you, don't your heart be troubled, okay? I'm going to send you a comforter. It's the Holy Ghost. He's going to be with you always. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead and guide you in all truth, okay? He's, you're going to receive power when you receive him. You're going to receive gifts. You're going to receive fruit. Man, these are the benefits. This makes sense to you? So when you're evangelizing, amen, these are the things we got to talk about. I, I just want to say I truly appreciate how you've given us the standard. And it's one, it, you gave it to us in a way that we can evangelize with it a whole lot better than we've been able to in the past. Now it's like, it's so easy to um, to give people the standard. It's so easy to articulate it. I haven't been always... Um, great at articulating what it is besides just giving them my experience. I, mm -hmm. I just, listen, I was baptized in water. I was baptized with the spirit. My life changed. I got some power. I can do what I was not previously able to do. But I really mm -hmm. appreciate how you broke it down to like a blueprint so I can say, well, here's this scripture. Or here's this scripture. Or here's how you do this. And this is why we do that. And this, it gave, them, gave me a why to my experience, you know? So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that the Holy Spirit, I was, the Holy Spirit had me praying for the backsliders. I pray for the backsliders mm. here. And he began to allow me to, he led me one day to um, share a post on Facebook about Acts 19. And that post led to me sharing my born again experience and asking, did anybody have any questions or anything? You know, call me or text me. People actually started to reach out. Wanted Come to on. be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was like, I knew I was missing something. I just didn't know what I was missing. Let's 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 make it happen. And people began to actually desire what they were missing. Some people just don't know what they're missing. I know it. Yeah. They just don't know the missing. I was baptized in water. I, hey, I have a self-will to do right. I want to do right. It's like I'm 
Like Paul said, uh, I agree that I'm supposed to do right, but something in me keeps making me do wrong. Like I don't have any power. And and people, God allowed me to see the backsliders returning home. He come allowed on. me to see, um, when one, one of the ladies came to me, she told me I am a backslider and I want to come home. Help me, you know? And I was mm. able to give her the standard that worked for me, but the standard that you gave me, I was able to give it to her and join my experience with it. And she was refilled. That's the, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. Did it bring you joy? Mm -hmm. And not only did it bring me joy, we created a relationship now. Now mm -hmm. we pray together on other days. Now she's part of the other prayer group, Daughters of Zion. It, it created an actual um community now she's a part of our you know daughters of Zion praying community she came to um church sunday she'll be joining us sometimes i mean like it, it's it's my sister now like she joined in the family and it's amazing what god does but it was, it was all leading by the holy spirit i didn't have it on my mind to pay for the backsliders god told me to start praying for the backsliders one day in prayer it's nothing of myself he just told me what to do i started like you said i started articulating what he prayed i said what he said i prayed and the back he, <laughs> he let me see a backslider come home and man <clears throat> it, it brought me so much joy and it still does yeah that's what the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous looks like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the fire we're talking about. All consuming fire. Okay. Yeah. Let's get excited about it. That's what we've been called to do. Man, we're not going to be in this mundane religious practices, going to church, getting dressed, getting undressed, have this program, have that program, and, and we got to do this, and we got to do that, and we got to go here, and we got to go there. Hold on. Anybody getting saved? Anybody getting filled with the Holy Ghost? The dead getting raised? Any miracles happening? And what are we doing? Let's get some fire on us. Amen. Yeah. And so as we do those things, man, but you've got to believe it in your heart. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I have the power of God operating in my life. Amen. Amen. And people are getting born again. People are getting healed. People are getting restored. Because of the anointing. Because the word is working in me, to me, and through me. The word does the work. The Holy Spirit does the work. Because the Holy Spirit is moving in me, to me, and through me. Come on. Yes, Stephanie. Yeah, I was just wanted to allude to what uh, Sister LaQuisha was saying, excuse me, Minister LaQuisha was saying. Like, you also taught us about, like, skipping gradients. And sometimes it, it was hard to connect the dots. Like, we know that we pray. We know what we, you know, communicated as far as what God said. We know we did all of those things. And then it was like, okay, God, what are we missing? For me, it was like, what am I missing? Like, mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you don't see, you know, what you're praying and then you don't see the manifestation, you'd be like, wait a minute, well, maybe I'm doing it wrong or maybe, you know, it, it wasn't for this time or it wasn't for this season. And then you came out with it. The Holy Spirit always gives you strategies and always answers your prayers. And when you are sincere, like you were saying, and when you really, you know, want to see these things happen, you be like, God, what's up? What am I doing? And God say, there's nothing wrong with you. You came out with these, with these um, teaching series. There's nothing wrong with you. Or, or you say, try it again. And then you came out with the skipping of the gradients. Sometimes we'll go from A to M and we miss mm -hmm. B, e, D, E, F. And then you'd be like, man, you know, now I got to start all back over again. Then you're like, no, 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 no. You know, so 
making sure that people have what they need at these stages in their life, just like God did us. And so, like you said, being able to articulate that and then help people and answer questions because all of what she's talking about, all of those young ladies, they were at our service on Sunday and wow. all of them. And wow. one of them in this session right here tonight, Sister Takara. And so they ask questions. And so now when they have, um, you know, when they don't understand something or, or whatever, if something happens in their lives, they're like, let me reach out to my sisters. Let us pray so that we can, you know, join our faith together. Or like she said, you know, um, I'm praying in tongues and then my, my tongues change. You know, what does that mean? You know, because sometimes if we don't understand something, we it can cause fear to grip us. Right. He said, no, 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 no. That's a good thing. You know, keep going. That means that you're growing just as our English evolved, spiritual language will evolve as well. And right. so all of these things, man, and, and that was one of the greatest things that ever helped me was don't skip gradients and discern, figure out where people are. Sometimes we'll say that people are not saved when in actuality, they just need to renew their mind. Yeah. That is the most powerful thing that I ever could have learned and got because now it's like, okay, well, what does the word say about this? It helps you to redirect people back to the word. I'm mm -hmm. worried about my opinion or, you know, all of those things. What does the word of God say? And that yeah. is the final say. And when you can meet and agree on the word of God, you got something there. Something yeah. showing up in a move and shake. And so... Just to allude to what she's saying, that's what helped me. Is this is good? This is good. Listen, we want to make sure, and you all are are exemplifying what I've declared that we teach to teach to teach. I'm here to teach you. You're going to teach others, and lives are going to be transformed. Okay, teach to teach to teach. And if we will go from this place, if we've been taught tonight, if we get taught as we regularly get taught and go teach it to somebody else, you're going to see lives being transformed. People are going to get saved. People are going to get get uh, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. People are going to grow. People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered. Many times the enemy works off of what they don't know, what they don't understand, or what they don't believe. And so when God feeds us and he teaches us, we go and we teach it to others. Okay, we go and we teach it to others. And most of all, we demonstrate, and again, real preaching is explaining why and how I live like I live. Because that's the proof in the pudding. They say action speaks louder than words. They've heard so many people declare what God, what the Bible says and all that, but they like don't add up. It don't match. Okay, come on, Laquisha, and then we got to get out of here. <laughs> I was just going to say that you teach us and then we teach others and the people that we teach, they teach. She ended up going to give her experience to her coworkers and they ended up calling saying, we want to be filled. So now we got to schedule <laughs> another meeting because they want to be filled. So it's Come literally on. like... I, I just gave her my experience. I said, hey, um, Pastor Monique, can we come over your, over your house like we did with the car? We scheduled a meeting over there. Everything happened. God moved like never before. And then she was so ignited with the presence and the power of God. She First of all, she brought somebody with her that we didn't even know was coming. She brought company with her when she came. And so even after that, she ended up going back to work telling her friends and other people, co-workers about it. And then they desire the same thing. So now we get to do it again. So God is, it's, it's a, it's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. It's literally like a domino effect. You teach us, we teach others. They go tell somebody else. And that's the spreading of the gospel. It work When it works for you, you want to give it to somebody else. Listen, Come I've on. been set free. Let me help you. You know, when, you, when it's, when it's working and vibrant in your life, like Jeremy, it's like fire shit up in your bones. Like I got to go tell somebody. And when yeah. it works for you, you want to see people free. And when they get free, they want to see somebody else free too. And just to be able to have that power to know I couldn't do this before, but now that I got the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I can do it. Let me give you this. Let me give you the strategy. Let me give you what I did because I know it works. 
I, you won't deny your experience. Let me share, share that with you. So, yeah. Well, if I just say, you hearing this, I can't hardly hold myself. I can't hold it, Mr. Timber. I can't hardly hold it. I can't hold it. This is what it's all about. Teaching the teach to teach. Okay? This is who you are. This is what the fivefold ministry is supposed to be doing, equipping you for the work of the ministry. And if I've done my job, what you are expressing and what you are doing, amen, is in full effect. It becomes operable. Okay. Amen. We're not going to be reduced down to just having events. Okay. So I want to challenge you. I need you praying for someone. Amen. Somebody you don't know. Okay. And those that you do know. But send the word to them. You know, whatever. And, and, and raise the standard. If you know they're born again but don't have the Holy Spirit, say, hey, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, you need to renew your mind. You need to read your Bible. It's the power of God. That's how you get power in your life. That's how you get an anointing on your life. Okay? Amen. And then when you do that, you can be led by a spirit. And you don't have to be led by your feelings anymore. You have to be led by your wrong thinking anymore. Because you know the thoughts and the plans that he has for you. And they are good. And they are not evil. So that you can finish your course and get to the end that's expecting your arrival. Man, there are blessings. There is stuff. There are people that are waiting on us. I'm talking about some good people. I'm talking about some glorious people. I'm talking about, amen. My God. Who Jesus. Now, if you, oh, y'all, y'all hear this. Y'all hear this. Y'all hear this with so much grace and so much. You've been so used to being around wrong people. that You won't even do what you need to do to get to the right people. And because they're wrong, people don't make them bad people. They're just not the people that is ordained or assigned to your life. You're so used to being with wrong people, you won't even do what you need to do to get to the right people. And until you get rid of the wrong people, God can't bring the right people in your life because the wrong people are messing up. They'll sabotage it. And because you had not renewed your mind, you'll listen to them. You'll listen to them and you'll jack it up. He knows all things. If you're praying the Holy Ghost, you can know too. You no longer have to grope around in the dark trying to figure it out. It's already figured out. Listen to me. It's already worked out. You just need to know the plan. Whew. Come on, clap your hands right there. We got to go tonight. That's our time. Come on, love on God. Thank him. Thank him. We have an uncommon life because we're in covenant relationship with an uncommon God. Okay. Life is amazing. It's amazing. And there are amazing people that we're going to do life with. Okay? And everybody else that's watching is going to catch on and going to want to become amazing too. It's in them. They just got to be willing, amen, to submit their life to God. Father, we thank you tonight for your amazing ability to articulate your heart to us. We receive it in faith. We receive it with great joy and with great expectation. God, we're living like we've never lived before. And we praise you that you are an uncommon God and you chose us. You called us out of darkness into this amazing revelation of who you are. 
and who we are in you. So God, we agree with you quickly. And Father, we're gonna, gonna, going to uh, uh, do all things that you created us to do, how you want us to do it, and when you want us to do it, God. We yield ourselves. We surrender all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I yield to Pastor Sam and Pastor Stephanie and to Deacon Terry. And I want to tell y'all, listen, covenant with God, returning of the Lord's tithe as you covenant and saying, I'm not going to do life by myself anymore. I'm going to, to include you in being a provider for me. And that's why you can say, because I'm in covenant with him, that I will never lack another day in my life. Amen. You are my healer. I'm in covenant with you. So when your healer tells you, stop eating all that chicken now. Amen. And, and stop doing that. You're going to be like, I agree with you, Father, because you are the one that makes sure that I stay healthy and whole. Y'all getting this? Amen. Do not. Amen. Do not. Uh, uh, what's, what's the word for it? Uh, be grieved by the instructions that God give you. Rejoice in them because he knows what's best for us. Amen. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has the end of the heart of man, the things he had for them that love him. All right. Pastor Sam, Pastor Stephanie, dig tear. There we go. I just want to say teach to teach to teach. Because the Holy Spirit is ever teaching. We're ever learning. And our job is to teach what he's teaching us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. What a wonderful word tonight. Super excited. Thank you, KCCI, for being with us. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for all of your smiles, your nods, the shifting of the atmosphere. We love you. And you're going to see it. We're going to demonstrate it when we be with you on Sunday, early in the morning at 8 a.m. Glory to God. I'm super excited. So please, please, please be reminded we're going to be with KCCI on Sunday. We're going to be there with them. We're also going to fellowship. We're going to have brunch um, with them as well. And uh, don't forget to give of your offerings. KCCI, you know how to do that. You guys do that. Um, please, please, please. Bishop has already said about our covenant. And, um, and, and let's give. And where's the faith? We know how to do that as well. Let's give. And uh, thank you for uh, all of your service and your love um, on Sunday. Um, we had a, a very explosive time. We're definitely going to meet with the leadership team just to kind of go over some things. Um, that's what we do. Uh, we want to stay focused, want to keep everybody um, on one accord, want to stay in alignment. So we need to do that. We got to have meetings. There's administration that needs to happen uh, for us to be able to uh, continue to move forward and plow ground and do all the things that God has called us to do. Amen. Is that good? Good, good, good. Uh, Deacon Terry is going to pray for our tithes and our offerings, and uh, he's going to pray that wonderful anointing, wealth, blessing over us. <laughs> yes. And we're going to be ready to dismiss. Did I miss anything, Dad? No. Wonderful. All right. So we're going to be here. Deacon Terry. Okay. Come on, Deacon Terry. Hey man, thank you, Minister Monique. Thank you, Bishop, for the word tonight. I really enjoyed it. And it is, it is our time to be blessed. The wealth of God is upon all our life. Uh, we are tithers, and everybody that's tithed know what the word said. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. And I just thank God for the principle of sowing and reaping. That's the way I roll, and I honor God for that. I'm all in. Now we're going to uh, just bless all the seeds that's been sown, our tithes and our orphan. Father, we just bless you tonight for your word. We thank you for everything was said, God. We just receive everything that was spoken tonight, God, and we will apply it to our life and go forth in this hour, Father. We thank you for all the seeds that's been sown in this ministry, God. We thank you for our bishop, our pastor, our overseer, God. 
We thank you how you're blessing him. Continue to bless him, Lord, financial God, spiritually God. Continue to keep him healthy and his family, God. Bless his wife and his children, God. Everyone that's connected to him in this ministry, Lord, we just decree financial blessings up over their life, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. This is the year, God, of energy. Yeah. Wealth is upon us tonight, God. And we thank you, God. We call in the wealth, God, tonight in every era of our life, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, God, that you will multiply all the seeds that's being sown in this ministry, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bless you, we honor you, and we are grateful for your principle, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, glory to God uncommon favor uncommon wealth amen your seed your seed your giving produces an anointing for uncommon increase amen 30 60 100 fold increase there's no other return no nothing in this earth gives you that type of return amen favor faith finances Amen. Subscribe to the to the economy of the kingdom of God and you will always be on top of the economy of this world. OK, you won't be oppressed another day in your life in Jesus name. We love you all. Thank God for you. Let's go teach to teach to teach city to city, state to state, nation to nation. Glory to God. And let's go change lives together. Amen. We're going to see you KCCI Sunday morning. Amen. And the spirit of the Lord will meet us in that place and great things are going to happen. I love y'all. Amen. Lady Dorinda, you want to say anything? She says she loves us. Amen. We love you too. Praise God. All right, everybody. Mama, we love you up there in Michigan. Where mama at? Yeah, she there she is. Glory to God. She got her camera down, but she, <laughs> she on there. Glory to God. And, uh, Y'all know how to give, right, for, for, for uh, Words of Faith, Cash App, uh, uh, Givelify, PayPal, okay? Those are ways to give electronically. And if you got to write a check, then uh, get it to Stephanie, get it to Pastor Sam, get it to Deacon Terry, and it's a done deal, all right? Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. God bless you. Have a great night. That's it.